Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Bin Buster. I'm Graydon, and this is where I buy, watch, and review budget bin movies for you. Today's movie is none other than Distorted, starring Christina Ricci and John Cusack. Distorted is a story about what happens when a woman with bipolar disorder gets to live in a essentially a secure compound with a lot of smart tech. That's a basic premise of this film, so let's dive in to this. What happens when smart tech is put into the wrong hands? Answer, this movie. De uh, technically, this movie. That's everything there. This entire movie. Christina Ricci plays Lauren, a woman with bipolar disorder, who is this way after she was hit in the head when a home invasion happened, which also killed her child. So she keeps seeing things because of her bipolar disorder, things that are not really there at times. Upon not being able to sleep, her and her husband Russell, played by Brandon Fletcher, agreed to move away from the big city in means to try and help her out. Maybe getting away from the big city life is what she needs. Many people, there's many movies out there that kind of have this premise. Oh, let me move away from the big city life and see if my life gets any better. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's continue. <laughs> they find out what appears to be a quaint, secure apartment complex and decide to move in. This complex is, in other terms, this complex, for you, all you smart home aficionados out there, this is a dream come true. But it turn, turns into a nightmare for Lauren. I don't know about you, but having all this smart stuff and then watching this movie, I'm like, I'm glad I don't have any smart items. So let's just put it that way and let's continue. She begins to hear noises in a smart, in the speakers of the smart apartment. It's explained away as faulty wires. Could be, it, it, it honestly could be. There's always faults in wires and everything or a little hiss sound when the music's not playing or anything. There's always that in, in no matter, in anything you do. When she's making dinner, she notices there's a word flash across her TV screen. Like, kind of like that. Her husband doesn't see it. So she, so, this happens a lot. And Russell talks with her therapist. They think she might need to be committed. She doesn't like that. They, she storms off. They get into an argument. And then... He decides to install CCTV, which is closed captioning television. Those are like little security cameras. He installs it, just to keep an eye on her so she's not harming herself. To see and, and to see what she's saying is true. Because he, he believes her to a point, but yet he doesn't believe her. I I would I'd be on Russell's boat in this one as well. When Lauren is trying to find out what's going on, she goes on a side to try and figure out conspiracy theories and then we meet Vernon played by John Cusack who's all in 10 minutes of this movie and gets second billing I have no idea about that but he's a journalist and a hacker he's kind of one of those hack job journalists who, who do conspiracy theories type of stuff and he's doing how tech could be help c control your mind and make you complacent in doing stuff that you have you usually won't be able to do or don't want to do but he doesn't have much proof. And he says that this complex is the place where it's all happening. He states that Lauren's bipolar disorder is not affecting her like it does everyone else because she sees it and no one else does. And he tells her to know who you trust. There's a part of you that still knows who to trust. Use that part to trust. As she gets closer, to, as the movie progresses, there's scenes and flashes and everything. Some of her mind stuff goes crazy. You see the subliminal messages come across the screen. As she gets closer to the truth, she's attacked in the garage by the security manager and the groundskeeper of this facility. She's injected into her neck with something, then wakes up strapped to a chair with a Halo-esque headpiece. What I mean by that is, if you've ever seen any movies or anything about mental wards, they're usually... 
those head, or if someone had a severe neck or head injury, it's one of those halo devices that come down here that are usually locked here and they have a shoulder thing so you can't move. It, it's one of those. So she's sitting there, tied to a chair, eyes bugged open and and can't and can't move his watch it this as things are going across the screen flashing yeah it's not good then Vernon comes in and rescues her by breaking the TV and gets her out of this contraption he gives her a gun they run down the stairs she, he gives her a gun and tells her to run 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 and she runs and she hears shots boom 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 Russell's outside this time by the pool he hears the shots he goes oh no 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 and he thinks it's Lauren so he runs in Vernon <laughs> gets shot in the stairway. So he's dead. Yeah, John Cusack's dead with his short role in this movie. He's down to the new Sean Bean, folks. <laughs> um, as she does, she goes to the park. These flashes are still in her head. She goes to a park where she picks up this neighbor's kid that we meet earlier in the movie. She had a bad dream and was looking for a mom at this party. This little, She picks up this little girl. Sees her, sees her husband, starts pointing at the gun everywhere and telling don't follow me, don't come with me, blah. She takes her to this exclu secluded, like, barn where she's about ready to kill the kid. The subliminal messaging is working. Then we see her drive to this, like, huge sundial, cross this bridge to this other facility. She's carrying a bowling bag at the same time that has blood on it. She killed the child. So then we go in and we see that there's this... This villain's revealed to be this young guy who befriended her at this party from earlier in the movie. Named Philip Starks. We find out, as she places the bag on the table, what his whole thing was. That he's a... That he has this tech conglomerate that's there that's... Trying to see if they can control people's brainwaves through tech, through other means like that. And she just proves that it works. And he goes, you know you're going to be, you're going to be accused of first degree murder and you, it's all happened. There's proof of everything that you just did. She's like, yeah, I'm complacent in all this. Seeing like she's brainwashed. So as he goes to open up the bag, we don't see what's in the bag. He opens up the bag, apples start falling out. Then we get a flashback of her at the farm where her husband finds her. The kid that goes to, stays with this couple who were on this farm, stays there, they call their, her mom and dad, tell her where they find her, that they're both, that both Lauren and the kid are safe. And then they, Lauren cuts herself on her hand and smears it on the bag. She then takes the bag up there. And we see, after that, we see Russell coming with the gun. He shoots this Philip Starks guy. Everyone comes in. Police, police sirens, cars go up to this facility. Arrest everyone. Problem solved. Police show up. Then we see this small little house in the countryside. Lauren and Russell move in there. Russell's having problems with the baby monitor. He goes, I can't get this thing to work. She goes, it's okay. We don't need it. Do you think that's a really good thing? And she pats her belly. Because she, it turns out she's pregnant all of a sudden, again. That's awesome. But anyways, as they hug, she looks around and goes, we don't need it. We're safe. And as they hug, she looks like, am I really safe? It's one of those things. It's like, <clears throat> are they really safe? And it just ends right there. My thoughts on this movie are, this is a pretty generic movie. Movies like this have been done before with Smart Tech. We got Hell, long time ago, and like where that house was alive and everything. So there's other films that have come along that have done this a lot better, or have done it to the point of, hey, here's a person with bipolar. I'll give it credit. Bipolar disorder is a horrible disorder, and people suffer a good long while with that. And Christina Ricci does a good job at doing that. She plays these type of roles pretty well. But she does as best as she can in this movie. This is like Daredevil. 
Say what you will about Daredevil and Green Lantern. Say what you will about those two films. The actors in there were pretty solid. It was the writing and the direction. That's kind of what it is in this movie, too. It's the writing and the direction that has nothing to show for itself. Uh, John Cusack, at times in this movie, you could see where his double's in there. Like, you see him first, he's taking pictures of the pl of the building. You can tell that that's a double. Because you can tell how John Cusack's body style is by if you've seen any of his movies. And you can tell that this guy doesn't fit it. The building where they live, every time they do an outside shot of it, like, to show the huge building, it looks like it's a picture. It does. Like, honestly, the CGI for that was atrocious. Like I said, Richie's great. The supporting, it's a, the smaller supporting cast that actually has roles are great. The writing and direction sucked in this film. It was horrible. Cusack is the only thing in here and he's only in there for 10 minutes. He's only in there and he gets second billing. Don't know about you, but I think John Cusick is kind of starting to suffer from the Nicolas Cage syndrome where you just do something for money no matter how good or bad it is. Don't trust me? Check out any current Nicolas Cage movie that's direct to video. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Also, I don't suffer from seizures, but with all the flashes that they have in this movie of all the stuff that she's seen with the subliminal messages, I started getting sick myself. If, if you suffer from seizures or that type of stuff really will make you throw up, don't watch this film. Save yourself the headaches. Save yourself the trip to the hospital. I'm not recommending this movie for you guys. I'm giving, really, I'm giving this movie one star. One little star. You know what? That's too generous. I'm going to give it a half a star. That's right. This movie gets one half star. Why? It suffers from the same thing that... Like I said, su uh, suffers from the same thing that Daredevil and Green Lantern suffer from. Decent actors, horrible writing, and horrible direction. If it was done by a different director and a different writer, this movie w might have been actually pretty good. But it wasn't. And always remember, in closing, tell me down below, how big of a Christina Ricci fan are you? Or how big of a John Cusack film? fan are you? Tell me what your favorite film is from either one of those actors down below. And as always, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification for more videos like this. I post them every Wednesday. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Graydon. This has been Bidden Buster. Have a good night. Have a great night. Make it a movie night. And remember to dive right in.